Okay, so let's start, guys. So as we said, welcome. Um, my name is Alon, and I'm here with my uh, good friend, Cole, um, uh, who is another colleague. Uh, we both study in uh, Parma, in the medicine and surgery taught in English, uh, living in Piacenza, and now in uh, our exam sessions, uh, taking our uh, second semester exams. Um, in the chat, as we said, uh, we have some colleagues that will answer also your questions, whatever is not clear, uh, please uh, feel free to ask them. Um, so we also have other uh, perspectives beside ours. Um, and yeah, and it's, uh, hopefully it will be an hour long, not more. Um, we are going to start talking about the university and the course, which Cole will uh, start and present. And then we will talk about the city, which I will talk about it. And we'll do a little summary. And I think uh, that's it. Um, I forgot something, Cole? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. Okay. Do you want to show the first uh, the screen? Um, yeah, I can. Uh, oh. You know, if you can. Uh, I can't share my screen. It's uh, disabled for me. So I will do it. Uh, a question was, was it going to be published somewhere? Um, yes, we were planning on uh, publishing it on um, just places where students would be able to see it. So um, a website like Enter Med School where um, I don't know, a lot of prospects are there. So yeah, if you have a problem um, with that, feel free to um, leave the recording and then you can watch it. And um, like I said, we do have a list of questions. And so if you put your question in the form, we'll make sure we get to it. Okay. Okay, do you wanna start Cole? Um, yeah, sure. So obviously I can't really change the slides here. So you will let me know. And I'll um, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. So the first thing we want to talk about is what is our basic course structure? Now this is a new course and because it's one of the, the, the newer courses, they obviously, um, they want to change things, right? They want to give us a new approach. And so as you can see, um, there's a lot going on in the slide and it is kind of chaotic, but we just kind of wanted to kind of highlight some of the, the, the standouts, I would say, throughout our course. Um, so our first year is quite jam-packed. We have a first semester with around 10 courses, um, so it can get a bit crazy. Um, and the reason why we have such a, a condensed course load is because they really believe in us having that sixth year a bit more open and a bit more free. Um, and I think the end goal is for us to be able to go um, to partnered universities or hospitals in Europe um, to do our final clinical rotation while we work on our thesis. Um, so this is why we kind of have like a, a five year course that's quite intense. And then our, our sixth year, we get a bit more flexibility. And if you don't wanna stay in Piacenza, um, I don't think you're gonna have to. Um, some of the other highlighted stuff you might see is at the end of our second year, we have a biomedical clerkship. Um, this is, I don't know, unique to a lot of courses that don't have any um, I think as well, it, it could be in a lab because it's a research clerkship. And so this is just something different as well. Other than that, I've highlighted some other clerkships some rotations. So end of third year, um, in the fourth and fifth year, and in the fifth year as well, you're going to notice that there's um, public health and international health systems. Um, now, we don't exactly know the layout of this course, but it is interesting because obviously, um, there's a lot of spots for international students for our non-EUs and it will be useful if you want to maybe come here and then go back to your country. We might be taking a focus at, um, on these kind of um, not be too behind if you try to go back. So on to the next. So I've put in uh, two 
sample weeks here, um, some samples of what our, our week to week courses are like. Now, as I said before, the first semester is quite chaotic just because we have so many courses. And so there are some courses that we take that you won't see here, but just as an example, you have your physics, you have your cells and tissues, which is histology. You um, your big courses in the first year are this physics and the cells and tissues um, and the molecular biology. The statistics are kind of on and off. You have different modules and um, yeah, they aren't as kind of big as like histology, for example, where you have 60 hours compared to something else where you may have 10 to 30 hours. Um, so here is just a list of all the courses that we have taken four main categories. And then within those, you have your kind of subdivisions. Um, and uh, beside, you can see the amount of credits and the amount of hours um, they correspond to. In the first year, um, we had an exam for each one of these courses. Um, and so, yeah, as you can tell, there's quite a few exams here. But um, yeah, it's just a, for the first semester, they want you to kind of get all this introductory stuff out of the way, and then you can kind of get into some more entertaining stuff like in the second semester. Um, Elon will show you. Um, this is a look at our second semester, right? Um, this is the reason why you come to medical school, right? You have your anatomy and your biochemistry, something a bit more um, interesting. You finally get out of those prerequisite courses. Um, biochemistry is obviously more focused on the medical aspects and anatomy, of course, is anatomy. Um, some schools do have their anatomy and biochemistry divided into two courses. Here we have them really focused and condensed into one, but you will have other aspects of anatomy in the later years, like you have um, courses more focused. So professors and teaching style, um, a lot of people were asking, what are the professors like? How good is their English? Um, from my personal experience, I had done another year in university before I came here. So I had kind of seen the typical professor style. In the first semester, um, I would say when you have these smaller courses and these kind of, I don't know, things like statistics, right? Nobody's a fan of statistics. Let's be honest here. Courses and um, the stuff that you're really going to need, like histology, anatomy, um, applied biology, you have these really great professors. And sometimes they don't have um, Italian professors from the university who can fill these spots. And so what they've been doing, which I really appreciate, is they've been taking professors who have international experience. Um, so let's use, for example, our biochemistry professor. Um, he got hired for a research position and he is like one of his focuses is on our course. Um, so yeah, he was originally Italian. He went to England first, then he went to New York and now he's uh, teaching in Australia. And so he's been kind of through these English countries. He's had times to practice. He's done research in English. And so he's quite fluent in his teaching style. And um, I think everyone's found him really engaging and has really enjoyed his courses. So I would say, yes, the professors are very good. Um, and yeah, when there is not a professor at the university, they're not afraid to go out and to headhunt um, some strong candidates. Teaching style, um, we don't really have assignments or labs. And that's something that um, not a lot of people may like, but we're fully marked and based our grades off of um, exams. And this is common in other uh, Italian universities, but I know there are some that may have a, a lab here and there. Um, if not for marks, just to kind of experience it. Um, now we can't make any promises, but in the future there is plans to get things like microscopes um, into the classroom. And I know there's been a professor, the histology professor has been working quite adamantly on this. Um, and so maybe by the time um, you guys get there next year, you will have an opportunity to, to do some more lab related stuff. Okay. So exams, um, when are the exams? Italy is quite a different system. You're gonna have um, exam opportunities all throughout the year. Um, and this may be beneficial to some to join late. If you miss the um, first exam session in let's say December because you can't get your visa or something, 
Um, don't worry about it. You'll have your chance to, to do it throughout the year. Um, you just gotta be, uh, you just gotta make sure they're not gonna pile up. So I'll tell you that the main ones are in February and June. The others are kind of supplementary. And so you might not get as much time to study, but usually in February and in June, you're gonna get two weeks in between the, the class end and the exams. Um, and like I said, for some, some years, this may not be um, first year in February. I don't, I'm not sure if we had two weeks, but they try to at least give you some time to study. Um, how many exams? Um, first semester, you get thrown, um, I don't know, let's say 10 exams. I'm not exactly sure, but there are a lot of little small pieces and the professors, um, they gave us an opportunity to get some done before the main exam session as kind of a more informal way. And then you weren't stuck with 10 exams in one month. Um, so they, they do realize that you do have a lot of exams. Second semester, you only have two exams. Um, but as I said, these are the dinosaur ones. These are the huge ones, um, anatomy and biochem. But here again, Again, they did give us an opportunity to kind of break it into two units, um, like a first semester, a first half versus a second half. Um, and yeah, so finally, written versus oral. Um, most of the exams are written. We did have two exceptions. Biochemistry, we were given an oral opportunity, but it was actually quite beneficial because it gave us a chance to improve our mark um, after doing a written version. And then anatomy, you were given two written opportunities, one on the first half of the course, one on the second. And if you are unsuccessful on these or you want to improve your mark again, you can then do an oral exam. Um, and yeah, what is an oral exam like? You kind of go in, um, the professors will be sitting down and they'll ask you a few questions and then you'll kind of get led through um, a discussion, some questions, and they really focus on trying to evaluate you on what you know and they're not trying to trip you up. They're just trying to, I don't know, almost have a conversation with you. Um, so where are the classes held? There might be a rumor going around that we do not have a campus, and this is partially true. Um, where we are currently studying is in um, a place called Collegio Alberoni. It is a museum and not a classroom. Um, and so it does have its pros and cons. Pros, um, we do have air conditioning in the summer when it gets like 30 degrees, um, and there is a lot of space. Um, there is a neighboring university where we did spend one day in their classrooms and it was more of a university setting and the classes were kind of small and stuffy and although um, it may not be the best not having a campus, um, I did appreciate our study room compared to theirs, it was just a lot nicer. Next year, the plans are to have the first years and the second years um, will be in this uh, museum building. Um, and then they're currently renovating another part of this museum and then will be put into this new part. Um, and yeah, if you look inside, um, you might've seen in one of the pictures earlier um, I where I talked about, I think it was professors. Um, there you go. You would have seen the, the carpets all around the room. So it is quite a beautiful room. Um, so yeah, on to the next. So the hospital, the current versus the future plans. So currently there is one hospital in Piacenza. It is quite close to the center actually. So it's not like in Turin where you're taking a 40 minute bus just to get to the hospital. Um, in terms of classes at the hospital, we don't have any formal classes at the hospital besides electives. Um, I thought I quite enjoyed the electives actually. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, this is probably the hospital where my class will be doing most of our training. And in the future, there's plans for the renovation of a military hospital, which should take, um, I don't know, I, I can't really give a date, but I would say at least four years. And then there is also another plan where there will be like a kind of super hospital being built in the area. The military hospital. Um, what are some of the benefits to being an English course in a, in a town where there's no uh, Italian course, right? Because we don't have the Italian campus. There's no Italian medical program around us, right? And when you're an international student, your first language is going to be English, and it's really hard to compete with the Italians in the hospital. Doctors are just going to gravitate more towards these Italians because they're going to have an easier time communicating with them. Um, so it's, it's beneficial for us because we're not going to have to compete with um, these Italians. That just means there's going to be more opportunities to work with doctors. And since we're in a small town, there is a lot of younger doctors. And so, yeah, there is going to be doctors who speak English. 
Um, and for examples, in our electives, we did meet some doctors who spoke English quite well. But in the end, you will have to, to learn Italian to go in the hospitals. But again, as I said, there's going to be less competition from the native speakers. So here's a list of some of the electives. Um, now, we have already completed the first three, and so I can tell you a bit about those. Um, video laparoscopy was kind of, we kind of just go over um, some videos of surgeries in the abdomen. And so you kind of get to see what laparoscopic surgery is like, and it's, it's quite interesting. Um, suture techniques, I think, is a, is a class favorite. Um, we were quite surprised to already be in the hospital and practicing something like this in the first year. We had these kind of practice skin pads and we were given um, sewing needles and all the surgical tools. Um, and then we had some of the head surgeons in the hospital come and teach us how to do it properly. And so um, that was quite enjoyable. And then the final one was um, kind of relating to radiology. And so, um, we had a chance to kind of see what the anatomy would look like on an x-ray and something a bit more applicable. So um, yeah, the electives so far so good. Uh, language requirements. Um, in English, you will need a B2 certificate. Now the test will be provided. It was kind of dropped on us last minute this year. They kind of just said, hey, on Monday, you guys are doing a B2 test. Now, if you are from a country that has um, high school in English, um, this is not really a problem. Or if you already have a B2 or some kind of other English certificate, you will be fine. Um, in terms of Italian, they recently decided on language um, certification requirements, but you will still need to learn Italian. In the hospital, you will 100% need to learn Italian. Um, so it is better to start off as soon as possible. And for us, we will be doing a clerkship in the second year. And so we're going to have to be at least able to have a conversation by the end of the second year. Well, are you sure the test will be provided? This year it was provided, but I'm not sure if the next year English uh, test will be provided. Okay, so yeah, like uh, it, it will change year to year. So I provided you will be expected to do it on your own. Maybe the university will provide some help. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to warn you that the B2 will be a requirement. Yes, so I, I think next year they will require a certificate before like after if you get accepted uh, in the rankings, they will ask you to show no matter where are you from. Um, the only exception was if you studied English in a, a like you studied in English in high school, right, Paul? Was, uh, yeah, yeah. So if you did, um, you're from uh, the United States or Canada or any of these places, um, you will be exempt from the test. Yeah. Um, so if you do plan to apply, remember about the English certificate. So I think it's my part now, but um, what, Cole, can you elaborate a bit about the attendance class and the attendance, how, how it looks um, like the first semester until all the students come in? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so in the first semester, especially because there's such a high percentage of these non-EU students, and there's also um, something called scrolling, um, there will be probably about 20, 20 students in the first few weeks of class. It really slowly increases. Um, and then they kind of come in waves. So around Christmas time, you'll get a huge wave of students. And then after Christmas, you'll get the most of your students there. Um, the first semester does not have a mandatory attendance. Um, and this is kind of nice where you get settled in. You know, you can kind of take care of what you need to do. But you do really need to be settled down before the, um, before the second semester, um, you will have to scan a QR code at the start of 70% attendance. So yeah, just more things to consider. You want to get here as, as soon as you can, but in the first few weeks, it is quite quiet. Uh, hi, can I just jump in? Yes, Aki. Okay, sorry guys. This is Aki from the same batch as uh, Cole and Alon. Uh, but about about this flexibility of attendance this year was kind of special because there were the COVID uh, restrictions in place too. So we cannot guarantee that it will be the same next year. Of course, the results come really uh, short notice to the beginning of classes, but uh, don't expect to have so much time like, oh, so I can just go to Italy in February. So I'll just enjoy some vacation before coming to Italy. Uh, be really uh, prepared to come as soon as possible. 
Thank you. Thank you, Aki. Um, if there's any other students that's studying with us in here and want to say something about the university or course, uh, feel free to, to comment or say here. Um, will, uh, will you be talking about the scholarships later or should I just give a quick? Yeah, you can do a bit of the scholarships. Um, so for the scholarships, um, they're really on a case by case basis. And a lot of the time it's based off the financial income of your family. Um, and so we recommend you go to read the, the Bando. Um, there will be um, some stuff on different university websites. I'm sure you guys will see. Um, and I think the website you would apply to is Ergo. Um, but do be conscious of the scholarships because you need to apply for them before you actually know whether you get in or not. I think the deadline is end of the summer. So just something to look into um, is, yeah, the scholarships. Yeah, we are not going to do a tutorial about the scholarships, uh, guys, um, just because it takes a lot of time and we don't give legal advices here. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So thank you, Cole. And I see you're also writing in chat questions, so it's good and the, the classmates uh, do answer. So it's thank you for the, our classmates. Um, just want to open something here. And I will talk about the city of Piacenza. Um, so um, the, the first thing that Piacenza is not in Parma. You, don't, you cannot walk from Piacenza to Parma even. You, you, to cycle with bicycle, it's also take a lot of time. It's 40, 15 minutes. The times I wrote here is mostly it's in train. It is how long it takes in train. And that's why mo I don't, most of the students uh, don't live in Parma. People that live in Parma usually like their family lives in Parma. Um, but let's see it in the map, guys. Just uh, make it. You can still see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, good. So um, let's go really, 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 really far. And we need to load, hopefully. Okay. This is this is uh, Italy, sort of. You can see. Well, it takes time to load. Um, this is Italy. You can see the boot here. Um, we are. This is Milan, and this is uh, Piacenza. Is where all these things. Um, so Piacenza is found like sort of in the middle between Milan and Parma. If you see, there's like one road that leads, and. There's also Bologna. Bologna is here. People that want to know, Milan is here. Torino is here. Padova is here, and Pavia is here. So Pavia is closer to Milan than Piacenza, and they are both of them. Piacenza and Pavia are. You can get uh, directly from Pavia to Piacenza. There is a train, but not every ten minutes. Of course, it's like one every hour or every two hours, something like that. Um, and this is Parma. You can see here. So they are not close, guys. They are not close. And yeah, so I will just do a little bit of more zoom. This is the city. Um, Piacenza is actually a province, and this is the capital of the province, you can say. And so I highlighted something. So we have a train station. This is the train station, quite big. The, this is the river that marks the start of another region, or another, uh, I don't know, Lombardia and Emilia Romagna. Um, so it's like we are actually, we are in Emilia Romagna if for everyone it's saying something or it's important. The hospital is found here um, and the university or the Collegio Alberoni is found here. So you can quite see there's a distance and it's around, it's quite far. It's to walk from the hospital uh, to the Collegio Alberoni, it's almost an hour, it's 4.4 kilometers. Uh, so it's very, very far. Um, and that's the, we are going to talk about soon about where we should, about living, where then you live, guys. And yeah, but just, just to get a little bit known on the city. So the yellow things is the city center. Um, here is the library in the city center, you can see. Um, and that's it for this. Let's, let's go again here and see what else I wrote. Okay. Um, another thing to notice is that the met we don't have a metro like the train metro. We have a metro bus, it's like a bus that goes 
through the main city's main, main site and it starts around six in the morning and ends at 8 p.m. 8.30, so it's quite early it ends, which uh, very hard, makes it very hard for you guys to travel if you want to go out at night to have beers and then go to the university or something like that. Um, and the trains to Milan, I rode to Milan, so it starts at five in the morning. I saw the first train, but again, it's, it's, it can start in one day at 5.30 or even six. And the last train, and it's the very last, and it's not very convenient, it's around 11 p.m., um, which also makes it difficult. If you want to go out to Milan and have a beer or go to a club, um, it's a problem if you want to go back on the same day. Because um, 11 is the last train, you cannot miss it afterwards, you have to wait till 5 a.m. So you can go to Milan and party all night and then come back at 5 a.m. for sure. But uh, just for you to know these things. Um, and the most convenient way is bicycle. You can see everyone from all elderly to students here in the city, they all use bicycle. Very, very convenient to go from everywhere, especially because the hospital and Collegio Alberoni is like very far from each other. And uh, the Collegio Alberoni from the city center is around three kilometers. Uh, so there are students that walk to school. Uh, if you like walking to school, like 30, 40 minutes, it's, you will enjoy it. But if you and with bicycle, it's like 10, 15 minutes. So bicycle is very, very useful here in the city because um, the city is very flat. And some pictures of the city now we will see. So this is uh, Piazza Cavalli. This is like the main city. Um, yeah, I always say that it's uh, similar to the Aorta, but uh, I don't know if you, we can appreciate it here. Um, but this is the city, the main city square here. Um, this is close to the train station. I usually I take pictures at the sunset, guys. So it not always looks like this, like this. So yeah, this is like uh, from the train station. There's a park there. And uh, this is when it was snowing. So in here in the back, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but there is the actual uh, Collegio Alberoni. We don't study going like there. We go through a side door or something. Uh, but this, what you see here, the snow is actually of the Universita Catolica, which is found on the other side of the street. Um, yeah, this is when it was snowing. This is also the same piazza when in, in Christmas. Just for you to see, you see the giant Christmas tree. Um, okay, this is the Po River. If you saw, there was the river. So this is the river. Um, yeah, it's, this is, I think, the longest river in Italy. Um, but you cannot swim them. If you thought about swimming in the river, you cannot swim them. And um, this is Publico Passeggio. Um, Publico Passeggio is like a park found in, a, like in really in the city, in sort of in the city center. Really, really nice to walk or just walk out there. Um, yeah. I, and okay, let's talk about the weather of Piacenza. Um, so this is, I found, this is from Google, <laughs> not uh, in document or anything, but I come from a country that is usually warm most of the year. Uh, so the summer is warm, now it's like 30 degrees. Um, you can use a fan in home if you're used to it or AC. Um, in winter, for me personally, it was really, really cold, but I come from a country where, in an area in the country where it's not snowing. So I was not used to this cold and um, six or uh, when it's zero degrees at night for me, it was personally cold. Um, but it was not raining every day here. Um, I don't know if it was a special year or something, but it was not raining every day. And regarding the snow, I think it was like twice or three times it was snowing. And um, so also not a lot. Um, and regarding the time of the day, so it's something that I found really interesting here in Italy. So the sunset now is around 9 p.m., which is very, very late. So you can have dinner and still see light outside. Uh, in the summer, in the winter, it's of course the time uh, is shorter. The daylight is uh, shorter. Um, okay, living in the city. So the library and study room. So there is one library that most of the students use because I, I, I think there are other libraries, but this one is in the city center. Um, so, um there's one library it can get quite uh packed with people or very crowded but 
Um, it's still very nice to study if you like libraries. And I don't go to libraries that much, but when I go to, you can also study outside, which, is, which I really like, if it's not cold or too hot. Um, study rooms, as Cole said, uh, there's going, there is plans for study rooms, but for now there is one room in the university. Some students go there in doing classes to study, um, but it's not uh, the perfect thing. It's not as, uh, I hope it, we will have something really, really good, but for now, I don't see we having a next year studying rooms or something crazy. Um, bars and aperitivo. So aperitivo, um, maybe if you're drinking alcohol, if you're interested, or if you just want to hang out with friends and not drinking alcohol. So you just go and buy a drink and be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and you get food included with that. So it can be like focaccias or pizzas, small pizzas which is nice if you want to go after school, if you have time or if you want to go on the weekends. It's around five, seven euros. It can go also to eight and nine, depends on the place. Um, I, I'm, I will say maybe if you, have, you didn't, no one talked to you about it, that if you go to Pavia or to Bologna, you can find aperitivos for students that are cheaper for sure. So here in the city, that's just one thing to notice. There is not a lot of students activities that's going on. We have a, a classmate that actually started to have like a student nights for international students or for all our students basically. And he started to organize this thing where they would get a reduced price, but still it wasn't, it's not established like it is in Pavia and in, in, in Bologna. So just for you to know at uh, this point, um, there is like a really cool beer place. If you're beer fans and you come here, I will show you there's like a really good, good beer place. Um, we have market twice a week and the market actually <laughs> disrupts the public transportation because it goes in, the market is found in Piazza Cavalli and the bus goes there. So many students comes late on, on Wednesdays. Um, yeah, the gyms, there are several gyms. Um, the average price can go from 25 to 40 euros. It can go also higher. Um, we don't have a gym from the university here in Piacenza. We try to push to, towards it. We're talking with the, some of the people that are responsible, but for now, we don't have a gym from the university. Um, yeah, there's a movie theater here, but I haven't been here because it's in it because it's just in Italian. And uh, maybe they have occasion where we can try to co talk with them to do like movies in English once occasionally. But since we are not a lot of students and not a lot of students that watch movies in English here, so I don't know. And it's very common in Italy to have movies that are in, if you take a movie, for example, The Dark Knight, they will put, they will change everything to English, like it will be dubbed. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, disappointing, but uh, this is uh, in Italy. Um, so also not a lot of people speak English here. What does it mean? So um, for example, in the first week if, when I went to agencies to talk about finding an apartment, well, I did not know Italian. Um, I did know Spanish, but it did not help me because they spoke only Italian. Um, there are of course exceptions and some people that do speak English, which is fantastic, but the majority of people do not speak English. And um, which is the for, for if you plan to speak English most of your time here in Italy, then it might not be the best thing to live here. And the reason is because it's, of course, it's a sm it's like small city relatively and not a lot of the young people here or students here. Um, there are, but not a lot. And the elderly here, they don't speak uh, English. Most of them, of course, we try not to generalize everything. Um, but the good thing is that it's forcing you to practice Italian. Uh, so I, I, for me personally, it's, it's better. <laughs> um, and about the student city, well, a lot of students came here and were expecting to have a lot of students going in the street and stuff like that. And personally, in my opinion, this city does not allow a lot of students going in the street and parties and every day there's activities. Um, and I'm saying it because I've been in Parma and I've been in Pavia and I've been in Bologna also, and I saw how it's like in the streets. And in Pavia, it's, um, I saw so it's, it's, you have a lot of activities there, of course, for students, a lot of bars, a lot of things that are open. And also the general feeling when you walk here in the street, you, you will see people that are a bit more older, less students uh, compared from what I saw in Pavia and Bologna. Of course, this is my personal experience, but I know many of my classmates agree on it, that if you're looking to a place to have a lot of 
students in the city, and this is like the main thing, then maybe it's not the best solution, uh, the, uh, studying here in Parma. Um, but if you, the, the other side of it is that this city is very quiet. So if you go at like at night here at 9 p.m. in the Piazza Cavalli, uh, the, the piazza that I showed you, um, I think even when I took this picture, you see it's Christmas, not a lot of people in the street. Very calm, very quietly, but also Christmas is like very quiet. Um, this is like in during the days, not many people. Um, so if you're looking for an environment that is quiet and very, we say tranquilidad, tranquilita, I think, or in Spanish, tranquilidad, um, like very calm, it's a perfect place for it. It's very calm. Even in the city center, you feel it's like very calm. Um, so you have, this is something you want to consider, but I will say a couple of more things um, because, uh, oh shit, I went the other way. Um, just a second. So we do have two or three other universities here or campuses, one from uh, Polytechnico is an institution of Milan and students that study here architecture, also international students that studying architectures here. Uh, we also have a uni Catholic university, one of the Catholic universities found here in Piacenza. And, and I don't remember if there's another institution, if you remember guys that study here, uh, you can feel free and say. Um, so there are students, it's not like it's completely dead and you're living in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there are students here, um, but there's no, it's not like the majority of the city is students. And I'm stressing this point out because I know many classmates were disappointed because of it. Um, I, I like I knew what I was going through, so I knew it's this is how it's going to be like. But if now you listen to it and you say, okay, this is not for me, then you should actually pay attention of this about this point. But if you're looking for this quiet uh, environment, it's definitely a good thing uh, in this city. But of course, it's not like we don't have. I said we have uh, the the I forgot what its name the the canteen place that uh, one of our classmates organized every Thursday that we go out there and we can, we can like meet other students from other places. And I organized like one event for the students uh, that came, I think in the beginning of the second semester. So uh, there are events here, but it's not like every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you have something here in the city. Um, uh, so that's, I, that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, Okay, cost of living and where to live. This is, of course, roughly estimations. Um, it can go higher and can go lower, of course, with exceptions. I just gave the range. And of course, it depends these prices about uh, where do you live, the condition of the building and stuff like that, of course. Uh, so, but um, I will just go through it quickly. I did not mention a private room that you share in a shared apartment. Because of course it, uh, it's very varied and can be even cheaper. But the prices from what I saw, it can go from 200, 600 euros even. Um, 600 is very extreme to have a room in a shared apartment. The, the, most of the prices from what I see now, it's around 300 to 450. If you plan to take a room and share it with an, uh, take, uh, take a room and share a flat with another uh, one or two people usually 300 to 450, this is the rent. Um, and of course, this is, I'm saying about apartments that are in good condition in city center, usually this is the price. If you go lower, you, can, you might live in the periphery or the apartment will have other problems. And of course, it also depends on the season. We will talk about it soon, but this is for a private room chair. If you're looking for a one room apartment or two room apartment means a mono locale or bi locale. And this is basically if you plan to live by yourself or you plan to live with a partner. And the prices will be, if you live with a partner then just divide it by half. But if you live by yourself, you want to live by yourself, it can go from 300 to 800 euros. The average prices from what I see so far is around 400 to 600 euros if you plan to live by yourself. Can go also to 350, but of course, if this is very varied. Um, I will say that I helped a friend to search an apartment in Pavia, and I talked with some people living in Bologna about the rent and situation there. And Milan, I'm not going to even talk about it because in Milan it's so much more expensive. Um, 
so, so much more expensive. It can be two or three times the prices that I wrote here. But in Pavia, it, you, it will be a bit more expensive. You can find in Pavia things that are cheaper, but from what I saw, and we have actually one classmate that lives in Pavia, and so I talked uh, to her about it a lot. It's usually a bit more expensive, the rent in Pavia. Um, usually, yeah, usually, Bologna also, I think it's more expensive because Bologna is bigger and usually the students live in the periphery. And of course, as long as you get, as you live closer to the city center, you, the prices there increase. But the one thing that is good in Piacenza because it's a small city and no, it's usually the prices comparing to other cities in the north of Italy, in my opinion, it's cheaper to live here. And about the dorms, there are a couple of dorms. Um, if you want to have questions, we have some people here that uh, live in, dorm, in the dorms, so you can ask about specific more about the dorms. Um, they are changing the price to next year, so some I know some of my colleagues are leaving the dorms, but we have dorms, then it also depends if you share a room with someone or not, and some are the Opinions are varied about the domes. Some people really like the domes. Some people don't like the domes, but it is an option. And university accommodation, I don't know anything now about it. And I talked to Cole before the meeting and he said he thinks there's might going to be something in the future, but we don't know. Don't expect coming here next year and the university will find for your accommodation. But I can say that they did help when we came, they did try to assist. For me personally, it didn't yield anything, but they did send us an apartment. They tried to contact to people they know here and some agencies, but um, it didn't yield for me personally anything, but I know they tried, but I don't know if they will be able to find for you things, uh, just for you to know uh, about the university. Um, so where to live, um, I will go again to the map. And to move this. Okay. So, um, again, Piacenza, this is the library, this is the city center. Piazza Cavalli, the one that you saw in the photos, was here in the center. This is the hospital. This is where the Catholica University and Collegio Alberoni, where we actually take lectures. So, when I, when Cole show you the class tables, everything is taking place here so far. It's also planned to continue to take place here, as he said, just across the street. And the hospital, we went to electives, but we didn't have lectures in the hospital, like anatomy or something like that. Um, therefore, um, now, in my opinion, this area is usually very quiet. I know Catholic students do live here, but it's very quiet and not a lot of things to do, because if I'll click about, let's say, coffees, you can see everywhere probably coffees, but not a lot. Like maybe here there is more. I think that here there's more. Definitely there are more bars and things to do in the city center. Um, then here, here it's like very quiet in my personal opinion. And um, also here, here it's like the industrial area, also super quiet. Not very, I personally did not like it. I usually recommend to search this in this uh, area. This is the area from Via Le Dante, Pietro Cella, and going north. Um, but even more north, to go in this area, in this small circle, if you can see it, that's basically the well, the to live is like, in my opinion, it's very good because you can go in the city, the city center, wherever you want, uh, quite in 10, 15 minutes walking distance, you can be in everywhere. Uh, of course, to the Al Collegio Alberoni, if you, you have to take the bus or a bicycle or to walk for 40 minutes. Um, but I found, I personally take the bicycle to school. I know also other colleagues, I know some take the bus, um, but um, just because for me, I, do, I couldn't find anything to do here and found a very area, residential area that most families are living there and not, um, not actually students. I, I didn't find it, that many things are going on here, but. I know many, I know some students from the Catholica do live here. And um, so I will talk mainly that this is the place I think that you should look for apartments here. Um, and also like if you cannot find and you find something nice in this area, this is also good. Living in this area, it's far from everything. And um, it's far from everything if you live here because it's far from the hospital and from the College of Alberoni. Um, yeah, if you think, 
this area to live here it's also okay and regarding the supermarkets we, there is like one there's one here like a couple of supermarkets and some i think in this area there's two and there's one in the train station there's also one in the city center which is a bit more expensive so supermarket you will have to go usually by bus anyway um yeah there are some neighborhoods that we less recommend to live like personally i don't think it's very nice to live um, but if you will come here, we can talk about it uh, more in detail, not going too much into detail. Um, so that's what I want to say about that. And we about searching apartments. Well, where we can where you can search apartments, like if you want to see already. So Facebook groups, it's there are Facebook group of international students in Piacenza where they sometimes publish apartments, and there's also like another apartment. There's like also um, things that they publish, uh, other Facebook group of uh, rent in Piacenza, but this is in Italian mostly. Apps goes, there are many apps that you can search, Idealista Immobiliare Casa It. And I know also you can ask people in bars. I know one of my friends found an apartment like that. Um, and we are, I'm going to talk about just another thing is that people that come on October, and Cole mentioned it about the sort of waves you can see of people coming to the university. So when the IMAT scores are released, and you, when this year what happened, I think they were released like around 7th of October, something like that. I don't remember exactly the date. And this university started on the October 18th. And at this and the first couple of weeks, there's something for the Europeans called scrolling and it progressively advances. And, but no news, no news, everyone that wants to study already accept their seats and like usually come here, except people that are facing visas difficulties. I know friends from uh, Iran, uh, took them a couple of months to take their visas. And it's, uh, so they you came on December, January, even February. Um, so on the first couple of weeks, not many people are coming. You will not see them. But it's also it's very difficult to find apartments if you're coming on the beginning of October because um, so now this period here in June, school finishes, people graduate from whatever. Summer is usually a period that people moving to different cities. Uh, so now there are a bit more apartments that you can see and check and compare. Uh, so you can see much more apartments. When I came to Piacenza in October, there were like three or four apartments in all, in all of the website, in the Facebook group. No one published anything. And I personally saw apartments that had no toilet, no uh, like holes in the wall that you have to renovate and stuff like that, electricity problems. Um, and this was a kind of uh, hard in October to find an apartment. Eventually, I did find a very nice apartment in a good location. But there are there is this factor that in October, it's very hard to find an apartment. And I know that we talked about this um, with the representatives. And we are going to try to see what we can do to assist in this situation. And it's not something that is unique to Piacenza. Um, you can ask other people in Pavia, Bologna, I know for sure, and probably Torino also, Milano, it's, uh, it's always anything like that. In October, it's much harder to find apartments, much harder to find apartments, um, but yeah, um, it's everywhere like that. Um, so also this might increase the prices when you come. Uh, so you can speak, there are of course high demand and not a lot of supply. And yeah, I think that's mostly what I wanted to say and um, just a little bit of summary and um, well, I, in my, I will say a bit of personally, in my opinion in Piacenza. So I talked about the fact that it's not a student city. So if you're looking to party every night and have this kind of experience, it might not be the best place for you. And um, it's also, as Cole explained, it's a new course. There are advantages for the new course, but there are a lot of also disadvantages you need to take to do, think about. And um, of course, if I, I, there was one question that was about how organized it, it is because it's a new course. Um, well, there are a lot, there is a lot of mess. There is a lot of uh, problems with that. Um, especially because also professors are not living here in Piacenza. They are living in Parma, so they are communicating 
commuting to Piacenza when they come to classes. So one time, for example, a professor did not show up to class because he was sick and could not. And until it got to, to all the students, it was it took a lot of time. Um, but I don't think it's something that is unique to Piacenza, this problem. I think it's happening in other universities when I talk with friends studying in Pavia or uh, mostly Pavia, but uh, they share similar experiences regarding the university's organization. Um, yes, yeah, so there are, but we, I think we have a little bit more difficulties on that side. And of course, there's, we don't have yet a campus here, there are no facilities. So um, if I want to go to work with a professor, I would like, I, I will need to commute to Parma, which is 40 minutes. And the prices of the train can be quite expensive because it costs like 5.5 euros to go to, to Parma by train for one way. So it's like 11 euros just to go to Parma which is expensive. And this is, uh, if you do it four days a week, or if you do it uh, for, it's, it's still, uh, it still costs uh, quite a lot of money. So um, that's a disadvantage with the facilities. Um, the professor as Cole said, and um, some professors are really good. Some professors are not good. I don't think there's any exceptions. Every university and every other person that you're going to talk about, it's going to be the same. Um, how many professors, how, what's the ratio between bad or per, good professors? Um, in my opinion, it's like, um, but I, I'm, I think my, my classmate says I'm not represents the majority here. So take, <laughs> um, so it's like around, I think 60% um, in my opinions are good professors. Um, but we do, we do have professors that it's very hard. They don't speak English quite well, you know. And it was very, very hard, and people are really struggling in the exams. Um, this is, but uh, this is a part of the struggle. But I know other universities, you also face this. I don't know about the ratio, and this is something very individually. So don't say now, oh, in Piacenza, most of the professors are good or most of the professors are bad. This is just personal experience. Um, so, and the upsides, of course, say we don't share a um hospital with the with the italian course which is i think it's better i haven't uh, i when i talked with some people about it it's definitely an advantage um and the city is quiet so for me personally it was an advantage because i wanted to the quiet lifestyle which most suited to me um so but it's still like i enjoy going out to have drinks with friends and stuff like that and i can still do that on friday I did not upload a picture of how crowded it is in Piazza Cavalli on Friday, but there are many people going out. Um, and I think I, that's basically my summary. So just this is basically what I wanted to say. Cole, do you have anything else you want to add or maybe other students here that uh, studying with us, they want to share their experience or something? If you want to. Um, there are maybe a few questions we didn't touch upon. Okay. Um, so I, we could just speed run those really quick. Okay. Um, is the size of the class 100 students altogether or divided into smaller groups altogether? Okay. Um, but not everyone are present. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, something else. Part-time jobs. Are there part-time jobs here? If you don't speak Italian, it's going to be tough. Um, if you yeah. speak English quite well, proficiently, like native language. Maybe you could find um, something teaching English. Um, yeah. If there are any Erasmus opportunities, at the moment, there are a few partnerships with the university, but the universities, um, personally, they don't really interest me that much. Um, they're kind of smaller universities, um, and a lot of them, you do need a B2 certificate in another language. So let's say a B2 certificate in French or something else, but um, we did actually talk to the professors about it and they are planning to um, keep expanding their relationships with other universities. So in the future, yes, there is quite a possibility. Is that a problem you're gonna worry about for your first few years? Probably not. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how organized does a program feel? Um, I think first year is gonna be, like the first year for us was probably gonna be a lot worse than yeah. what you guys are going to experience, right? Because we're kind of the guinea pigs everything that they have made a mistake on with us they will probably learn and not make the same mistakes for you so for us every time a professor who didn't understand how to properly record a lecture or how to upload their slides or 
um, little things like this, right? It's going to be so much smoother for you guys. Um, overall, there hasn't been too, too much chaos. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of the stuff that there has been issues with will be solved for, for the second year. So I think that's pretty much everything I would like to add. Yeah, also about the, I think that there was a question about the airports one time. You said about the airports. So actually the one thing that's nice is that you have three airports or four airports. Um, just because, until it would load. So you can go to Milano or you can go to Bologna. It's pretty much the same time to go to the airports. This is Malpensa here. This is Bergamo. These are the airports in Italy, in the, Milano. You will have to take a shuttle from Bergamo to Milano or from Alpenza to Milano if you have a car than a car. In Pavia, they have other tricks but that they do because they're in Lombardia. It's a different uh, region. Um, you can also go from Bologna, although Bologna looks very far. The travel time, for example, from Bergamo or from Alpenza to Milan is one hour. And then you have to switch from Milan to Piacenza, which is another one hour. And Bologna, the airport, I think is like, it's like 30 minutes or something like that from the city center. It's a, and I think the ride from Bologna to Piacenza is like one hour and a half or one hour and 45. So it's like pretty much the same time to get to the airport to, from Bologna and roughly the same cost. So if you take public transportation, so definitely we have a lot of options for airports. And the prices, I remember one, one student asked me to say the prices to Milan, it's around 6.8 euros, the train ticket. And I think to Bologna is around 10 euros and one way, I, I say just one way. Um, yeah, any other colleagues that want to talk? Oh, we can finish with it. The, let's see if there's other questions. They, I think I see like there's a lot of talking in the chat. But if not, then uh, thank you guys. This the, the main point was not to tell you guys come to Piacenza. We want you to come. The main point is just to show you pros and cons so you can decide by yourself. Of course, the life here is not perfect uh, and they're not ideal. There are goods and bads here. Uh, that was our uh, main point in this uh, in this thing, just to because we know there's a little many, many missing information. And Cole will might try to open a Facebook group so you can ask us more questions. Um, and also other colleagues can answer these questions. Um, but that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, any of the groups that we make will be posted in the same place you guys found the links. So um... We will probably get that done maybe today. So just keep an eye out and uh, yeah, we'll try to post some some groups for you guys to join and ask all your other questions. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I will stop the recording. Uh, stop.